In the year 2019, a former AWS engineer was convicted of seven counts of fraud after the personal data of more than 100 million people was stolen from unsecured accounts on a cloud platform. The breach has so far cost the US bank Capital One, one of the 30 institutions affected, more than $270 million in compensation and regulatory funds. This hack would eventually become one of the most popular and most referenced cloud attacks to have ever happened. And in this video, we will be replicating the exact same attack using the scenario from Cloud Goat by Rhino Security Labs. Starting as an anonymous outsider with no access or privileges, we'll exploit a misconfigured reverse proxy server to query the EC2 metadata service and acquire instance profile keys. Then we'll use those keys to discover, access, and exfiltrate sensitive data from an S3 bucket. But before we go into performing this attack, let's actually go over some key terminology. First, what is a proxy server? A proxy server is a server that sits in front of a client or user and acts as a mediator for requests made by the client. The goal of the proxy is to ensure that there is no direct communication from the client or user to the server. This is typically known as a forward proxy. On the other hand, a reverse proxy typically works from behind a private network that the destination server is in and intercepts the requests coming from the client to the server. Finally, what is the metadata service? The EC2 instance metadata service simply provides metadata about the EC2 instance and this data could include several things such as the AMI ID, the host name, and so much more. The metadata service can be accessed from the unique IP of 169.254.169.254. This is also known as the link local address. Next, Sega will go over how to actually perform this attack. Hello, everybody. My name is Sega Eliezer but I go by Zero Day on my YouTube channel. I'm a penetration tester and a red teamer. We were provided with the EC2 server IP that we must target and nothing else. So uh, let's curl this IP address and see what happens. So curl and it responds with this server is configured to proxy request to the EC2 metadata service. Please modify your request host header and try again. So in this curl command, we didn't provide any flag for the host header and H is a flag used in curl just to put data into the request header. So let's do something like host and do test and see what happens. No visible difference happened. It looks like the exact same output. So let's put the strange IP address of 169.254.169.254. And what this is, is just the IP address associated with the metadata service of EC2 instances. So if we just do enter here, we see that it successfully worked. And now we have access to the metadata service of this EC2 instance. So let's do slash latest for the latest endpoint here and do metadata, metadata. And uh, we see all these different endpoints here. The most interesting one, however, is this IAM endpoint because this endpoint is the one that could contains the credentials for the role attached to this instance. Now, if there's no instance profile for the EC2 instance, and there's no, there's no role, then there's simply not going to be this IAM endpoint. So we see here that there is an IAM endpoint, which means we can then get the credentials for the role. So let's see what this role is called. Uh, it's this strange looking name, Cloud Goat Banking WAF Role Cloud Breach S3, and this weird <laughs> string here. So this WAF is a web application firewall. And as you can see, not a very secure firewall as we all we had to do was just put in this host 169.254, 169.254. And just like that, the web application firewall was like, Oh, okay, you're probably fine. And because it allowed us now we can get the credentials for this role. So let's configure our profile. Let's call it EC2. And we get an error from the AWS C Lion tool that I'm running. Now, I was running a plugin for this, looks like a regular AWS command, but what it actually does is I have this AWS C Lion tool, which is a plugin for AWS. And what it's doing is making sure that your user agent, if it's malicious, does not get logged by CloudTrail. And instead, you can have a normal user agent that Guard Duty then picks up and doesn't flag as 
being malicious. Now I'm running a Parrot OS pen testing distro and in my current user agent, it would show Parrot as part of my user agent. So let's do this normal looking user agent instead that does not look malicious at all. It's just a regular uh, user agent. And therefore we wouldn't trigger that medium finding by guard duty. So now we have this user agent set. So every single API call that we would make would be logged as this user agent instead of the parrot OS user agent. Now I can do something like S A W S S T S get dash caller dash identity profile EC2, but this would get logged by cloud trail as it is an API call. Uh, note that AWS configure is not an API call, but this is. And what would happen is although my my user agent is fine. What would get triggered is the guard duty IAM instance credential exfiltration finding. And so what we're going to do instead is use the sneaky endpoints instance, which was research conducted by Nick Fricetta, a security researcher of the cloud. And what he found is that if you make an EC2 instance and you put it behind multiple uh, VPC endpoints in a private subnet, then CloudTrail would only log the internal IP address of that EC2 instance. And therefore, you wouldn't be triggering the IA instance credential exfiltration finding. So let's do AWS SSM start dash session dash dash target and put in the instance ID so that we can then connect to the sneaky endpoints instance and put in our profile of cloud goat. Now this profile of cloud goat is a uh, profile that I have that contains the administrator access policy. Let's clear this and we're now in the sneaky endpoints instance. Let's see, we're in user bin. Who am I? SSM user. So let's go into our user directory and we see here AWS. We have the SSM user. So AWS configure dash dash profile. Let's call it EC2. And in this instance, only within this instance, we'll be doing our API calls. So let's take this access key, secret access key and token and put it in there. So let's put this and let's put this as well, the secret access key. And finally, let's put in the token. So let's go in AWS credentials and AWS session token equals this. And finally, we can do stuff like STS, get dash caller dash identity, dash just profile EC2. Now I'm not gonna run this API call because this API call can look a little bit suspicious, the STS get dash caller dash identity. It's better to just query services that are not yet logged by CloudTrail. In addition to that, there's no real need to run this call. We already know what the role is called because we already curled the metadata service. We saw that the role that we currently have is called CloudGoat Banking WAF role. So that's all we really need to know. Running the STS get dash caller dash identity API call will not give us any additional information. So let's then, instead of doing this, what we can do is think about which services are likely callable with these permissions of EC2. Now, EC2 servers, especially if they have a web application, likely talk, very often they talk with S3. So what we can try is AWS S3 LS and see what happens. So let's put in a profile of EC2 and we see that that did work. So we do have S3 permissions and we have access to three different buckets. Now, this is a bucket that I just have in my own account. It just contains all my cloud trail logs. This one is the sneaky endpoints transfer bucket. This is the bucket used to transfer whatever kind of tools or whatever software you want into this specific sneaky endpoints instance. And this one right in here in the middle is the bucket that is associated with this particular challenge. So let's do AWS S3 LS and do it like this. And we see that there's all kinds of different data here and cardholder data it looks like sensitive information. So let's download that with the copy command and specify the bucket like this. And we put in here as dot to, to signify that we want to download every file in this current directory. 
finally, we're going to put this recursive flag to download all the files in this bucket. And we successfully downloaded all the files. Now, as much as Segev might have tried to be very sneaky within our environment, we can actually go into AWS and hunt for very specific indicators of things he might have done in our environment using a tool such as AWS Cloud Trail Lake. Let's go ahead and do that. In AWS Cloud Trail Lake, we can write SQL queries against our Cloud Trail log data to identify specific API calls. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So we can write a select statement for us to find the user identity username, which is going to be stored as a username value for ease and readability. And also, we can also look for the user identity session context. This will help us if we're looking for if the user logged in with MFA and stuff like that. And then store that as context. And then we can also look for the event time so we can know when this happened. The event name, which is crucial for this, as well as the AWS region, if that data is relevant to us. And then we want to make sure this is from our event data store, because that's where the data is coming from. We'll paste that in there. And we're looking for where the user performing this API call that we're looking for is the username is the IAM admin user. And in Segev's case, it was the CG or billable user that performed this activity. But in, in this case, I have manipulated these requests to look like they came from a different user so I can explain using these SQL queries. And then where the event name is specifically when Segev listed for buckets. So when he performed the AWS S3 LS command, he called the list buckets API call and we're going to specify that. And finally, we can also add a time frame. So somewhere around the last 24 hours. And I will just copy and paste this timestamp here for ease and put that in single quotes. And finally, limit it to five results so, this is that, so that this query is fast. And we'll run that. Now, we can see here the status of the current command run in and the query, all of that. And once it's done, it would mark this as success successful. And we can then go and look at the results of our query. So we scroll all the way up. We can see here the, the username, when the event was performed, as well as the specific API call. So if we were in the cloud environment where Segev performed those malicious activities, we can use this sort of query to identify those activities. And beyond that, we also observed that Segev performed a API call of retrieving those sensitive files from the S3 bucket. So we can specify here the get object API call and also run this same query. And this is running right now. And after a while, we get results of the different get objects. So in, in Segev's case, it was about four different objects that were exfiltrated from the bucket. But here, when I simulated the activity, I have exfiltrated about five different objects from a particular S3 bucket and we can see all the get object requests here. Now we can definitely go deeper into this analysis by specifying what bucket we're looking for in the query, but that would definitely take a lot of time, but definitely play around with the SQL queries and see what you, what you can find in your own AWS environment. Now, we've seen the risk associated with having unrestricted access to the metadata service, and this was actually caused by the instance using IMDS version 1. However, you can mitigate this by upgrading to IMDS version 2. We've also been able to use CloudTrail Data Lake for login and analysis of our CloudTrail data, which is very important for helping us find and audit different activities happening in our AWS cloud environment. When it comes to CloudTrail, it's very good to familiarize yourself with various attacker tactics, techniques, and procedures. It makes it a lot more easier to investigate or hunt for different activities that might be happening in your AWS environment. If you want to learn more about how to hunt for different indicators of attacks or compromise in your AWS environment, check out any of these videos to the left of the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.